I'm Barbara Spronk. I'm retired and I spent my career first as an academic teaching anthropology and doing some you know, higher level management stuff at university. And then for six years I was director of a non-governmental organization in the UK that did educational projects in very poor countries. Well, I think my first contact with the center was a pretty typical one because it involved Trudy Bone. I'm a member of the Canadian Federation of University Women, the Waterloo Region chapter, and our then president, uh, Ruth Russell, this would be uh, 2011 probably, wanted to establish some kind of group, some kind of network of women's organizations so that we could get together, talk about issues in common, coordinate our schedules. If we were all doing something for Women's Day, maybe we could get together and do that. So she went to the volunteer center, not quite knowing what she needed or who to talk to, and they said, you need to talk to Trudy Bone, <laughs> of course. So Ruth did. Between them, they got this network up and running. And it was at one of the first meetings of that network that I met Trudy and encountered the work of what was then the Social Planning Council. Yeah. And I, I was, I think I was chair of advocacy for CFUW at that point. And the, the work they were doing on poverty, their poverty-free uh, KW, intrigued me because that was definitely an overlap with some of the issues that we were trying to deal with at CFUW. So I joined Poverty Free, got to know Trudy really very well, got to know Alex, got to know people who were real activists in that whole scene, and eventually Trudy asked me to join the board of the Social Planning Council, which I did. I, after a couple of years, became the president of the council, and Trudy and I did a lot of work together. Yeah. My first real involvement with their work was at one of the community forums, yeah. and I was so impressed yeah. <laughs> because it was a way of enabling people to have their voices heard in a very safe environment because they're only dealing with people at a table of maybe maybe eight, maybe six, maybe eight people, right? Yeah. And uh, the facilitators were great. Um, they made people feel welcome. They made their words feel needed uh, without being the least bit patronizing or, you know, they're there kind of thing. Um, so that, that method of enabling community voices to come to the fore was something that stood out for me then and continues to stand out. And it was a, it was a Trudy initiative. I mean, it was a Trudy creation. She made it happen. And of course, because it was Trudy and she was so skillful at it, the way in which she was able to take all the feedback that was coming forward on these sheets and sheets and sheets and sheets of, of um, paper and come up with something sort of on the hoof that was totally coherent, that made sense, that brought meaning, extra meaning, deeper meaning to what people had been saying was phenomenal. Yeah. She was the catalyst. <laughs> she was the one that made things happen. Not that she didn't have great staff, she did, and, and they're still there and they're wonderful. Um, but because of her, her own knowledge, her own personality, and the depth of understanding that she had of community issues broadly and locally, um, she was the go-to gal for anyone in the community who needed information. And information to Trudy was not just something that you dug out of a book or out of a file or clicked up on the screen. It was always contextual. So she spent a lot of time with people who came to her, probably more than she 
<laughs> she should have because she had such a demanding job, but that she saw that as their job. So people would just drop in and, you know, she would spend an hour with them finding out what it was they really needed. And that way she could set them up. She could match them with what was needed. And and it was such it was such a tragedy for me when the funding for that information center disappeared because that information operated on Trudy's principles. Information was always contextualized. You know, the people on the phone would dig for what you really needed to know, right? And then they would match you up with what you needed. Yeah. So that was one of her roles. Another of her roles, of course, was um, this, well, indefatigable energy you know, um, that she brought to her job as advocate for people without voices, people who needed their voices heard, um, people who were being done down by the system to whom no one was paying adequate attention. And she had a phenomenal way of um, bringing those, those people together you know, from all kinds of backgrounds and circumstances and you know, putting them together with people who could make a difference for them. So, and of course she, she led this organization that was um, whose mission is to to see into the future, which is unique. There's no one else doing that. Um, and I don't think that that is, certainly wasn't then and I doubt it is now, adequately recognized by the people who could be supporting this. How phenomenally important it is to keep not just on top of the trends, but to know what needs to be done to mitigate the really drastic effects that those trends can have on the most vulnerable. Yeah. And of course she had this lively interest in neighborhoods that was you know, also a real eye-opener to me. Yeah, yeah, where people really lived. Over the years, what changes have you seen in the, our local community? Well, you know, I think it's more changes in my perception maybe than it is in the community. Mm -hmm. But certainly I've seen just a huge increase in numbers. Yeah. I mean, I, I only moved here in 2004 and really only became part of the community in 2006 because I was still doing international stuff and I was away most of the time. But from 2006 to now, I've just seen this incredible growth in numbers. And a very skewed growth um, because this growth is happening, it seems to me, primarily in the tech sector, which is a very distorting role, I think plays a very distorting role in our economy. Because the tech folks are concerned with technology and even if you bring them in in a supportive or helping role they've got a technological solution to everything and I'm sorry I, I think they've got technology looking for problems rather than you know, problems that are really looking for technological solutions and most of the money is going towards technological solutions and you know local funding is just not supporting the kinds of initiatives that the Social Development Center is so good at doing, but can't do alone. Yeah, so housing is a big one for me. I see all these huge condo developments going up along, you know, this new LRT corridor, and I think, eh, so are the folks that really need to use the RT even going to get to it? Because they don't live anywhere close to it. Oh, I would love, of course, to see something like the Social Development Center being given once again, you know, a central role in advising local councils, city councils, regional council. Um, 
because they have so much wisdom and so many connections that they could put to work on behalf of what councils are really need to be attending to, right?